Hey family, it's Friday. Follow Hi. the Friday. Glad to see you. And we've got, uh, we, we do, if, if you're not familiar with this, if you only join us in overtime, our live radio show does Follow Up Friday, where we cover, we kind of revisit everything we talked about previously in the week, because there's never enough time for anything. Yeah, yeah. And we know a lot of people go home and talk about this stuff, and then bring back up what they want to talk about, bring up something that we didn't discuss. Or and a lot of times something. we can go deeper on things that we didn't get a chance to, right. or get to people that we didn't get to, because, yeah, yeah we got to cut it short sometimes. And today the phone lines were lit up all morning. There were three big things that we talked about, and we want to do the same thing with you here. Maybe yeah. there's something that you want to revisit, either from the live show or from overtime. But the three things that oh, from the week that really hit hard this morning were um, one of them was abuse in the church. Yes, we had a young church, girl right? call no. and say that her dad was a leader in the church, and she he was abusive at home, and so she grew up with that. But then she would go to church. And he was very charismatic, everybody loved him, and they would even tell her, you're so lucky, your dad is so amazing. And so she says she's starting to heal from that, but she asked, like, what can the church do to make, to improve in this? And so we kind of touched on this. We saw some of you commenting on it below, uh, like Fred and others, and just needing to hear us talk explicitly yeah. about this, the issues Morning, of Mike. abuse. Jeffrey, Eva, Yvonne, happy Friday to you, Yvonne. Roseanne, happy Friday. Good to see Callie again. Morning, friends. Um, uh, I'll answer your question in just a second, Callie. Uh, the, uh, the other two topics we talked about at length were, uh, were dating and how dating culture can shift because it seems to have gotten out of control. Right. Um, and then the other one that hit really hard was talking about marriage and how we can as fewer and fewer people get married, how can we convince younger people that marriage truly is worth the cost, yeah. essentially? And you realize, just, I'm, I'll be nice about it, but that you used the wrong word and you wish you would have used a different yeah. word. Only, it wasn't a bad, like, there was nothing wrong with it. It just distracted people. And so it's not so much how can we sell the idea of marriage, but we got some great calls that kind of shifted. I was glad some question. people knew what I meant. Yes. I didn't yes. say it as well as I could have. I shouldn't have said, how can we sell the idea of marriage yeah. to non-believers? And I shouldn't have said that. It's more just how can we advocate that God's idea of for life, yeah. that you be with one person committed, man and woman together for life, that it's better. It's not like always easy yes or always good but it's better yeah and how can we advocate that? i shouldn't have said so yeah yeah now callie asked me um asked about my tattoo <laughs> hey so the, the tattoo is actually an abstract representation of psalm 127 about a quiver full of arrows you're, you're blessed if you have a lot of kids basically i didn't want arrows on my arm because i don't want to talk about archery all the time but I wanted a way to like real honor, remember that God's given me all these kids and I'm so blessed by it. So it's an arrow with five stripes, one for each kid. Aww, so cute. that's what that is, in case you're wondering. Thanks, Kelly. Uh, Jeffrey said, I loved the balanced discussion about dating and how a healthy process requires both genders to step it up and help each other. Yeah, Jeffrey, that's where I talked about my huge pet peeve in life. I, I have just about had it, and poor Janelle has to put up with this. But I have just had it with men being the sole cause of all of life's relationship problems oh, and the punchline of every joke. Yeah. And I, I just, I've had it. And I, it's not biblical and it's not fair and it's not going to solve any problems. Not that men, and th this is where you push me in a good way. I'm not trying to imply that we don't have anything to work on. I just don't think it's a reasonable thing to talk about unless there's a two-way street. Oh, yeah. And I'm just weary of having to have men be the ones who are always talking about change. And the moment you suggest women could change something, you become a chauvinist pig. Yeah. As if you guys have it all figured out. One way this has come up in my marriage, especially early on when Len wanted to open the door or he wanted to do things for me, he's like, you know, it's really frustrating because women say they want to be treated better and they want men to do better. And then when we want to, y'all walk around like, yo, I got this. So when, I, when, when we were first dating, it was little things like opening the door. You know, he's like, let me, let me do this. But even in marriage, he's, you know, I, I like, and maybe that's why I get overwhelmed, but I'm like, okay, I got this. And so I look at all the things I have to do. And a lot of times he's like, I'm here for you. I'm your partner. You got to tell me. And so if you're going to tell me 
be a partner and that I'm trying to be, then don't walk around like like an independent woman. So uh, in terms of what you said about it being both ways, like you said, if we're going to tell y'all step it up, there are things we can do to make it easier and, and things we can step up on. Well, why is that so hard, though, you think? Well, why has that been such a difficult thing? I think it's what you're saying, the pendulum after coming from the 50, 40s, 50s. And women being pushed down for so long, yeah. they're just I sick of it? I think it just switched, yeah. It just kind of swung and we went kind of past where we wanted it to be. Because even in the article I didn't mention during the show, when it comes to dating, the article that we used earlier in the week said, like in the 60s, 60% of college age men and 80 something percent, like 86% of college age women want and value a traditional relationship and obviously that's not how they're acting so we want differently i think it's just that the culture has shifted and now christians and non-christians alike are like how do we get back you know we want yeah. the traditional way uh jeff uh mike says women don't allow men to be chivalrous they have the attitude of i can do it by myself i don't need a man and yeah. men need to be more like cowboys and see men still want to be needed Len says that a lot, and yeah, he says he feels that a lot. Not in the house so much, but when we talk about society, he's like, yeah, women walk around with this thing, in general, of I'm independent, I got this. And so it makes it hard for a man to know, how do I fit into your life then? Well, like, yeah. am I needed? Do you need me? Like, if Sarah <laughs> says that she needs my help with something or needs me for something, and it's not frivolous, like, I need you to take out the trash, I need you to pick up that garbage, that, not that, like, I need your advice. I need you to help me with this yeah. or to understand like that's that'll send me into cloud nine I'll feel valued respected I think it's really important yeah yes Callie says what if you're a woman who doesn't like telling uh, your husband what to do I'm very headstrong and I don't like help but want a traditional marriage so Brian that's where you meet in the middle somewhere it's it's as remedial as this is Sarah and I went through this in a big way with something as stupid as the garbage. I brought up this up a million times. We fought about the garbage. She gets so mad at me. I want to see how much I can fit in there. Yeah. <laughs> and kind of like, yeah. I, and I just am not in a hurry to take out the garbage. It drives her nuts. Yeah. She didn't want me to, t to have to tell me to take out the garbage because she's not my mother. And I didn't, and I was frustrated that she wanted me to just know when she wanted me to take out the garbage and I didn't. Yeah. So the meat in the middle was she actually had to get over that and say, Brian, I want you to take out the garbage now. It's bothering me. Yes. And I had to, to make a change and say, I've got to be more conscious, when, now that I know what she wants, of not letting it get that far. And now we don't fight about the garbage anymore. Yeah. I try to take it out before she'll even notice. Yeah. And we, but this would have never been solved had she not actually said, this is what I want from you. Men want to be, we want to rescue our women. We want to help them. We want to, we want to be needed by them. Yes. And Callie, I know you say you don't like telling your husband what to do and you don't like help. I, I'm not necessarily, I don't, it's not that I don't like help, but in my head, I'm very much like I got it. So my go-to isn't, oh, how can I get help? So I have to be intentional of thinking, let me remember we can both do this. So my encouragement to you is, it's, a, it's almost a gift you give your husband on participation and like you said, rescuing you. For me in homeschooling, it was one day, months oh, ago, yeah. and it, we've been homeschooling from the beginning. <laughs> but I told Len one day, like, you know what, I can really use help. And then I gave him specific. I said, this kid and this kid, if you just sat with them, for an hour and did math. He's a way better math teacher than I am. You know, and I said, you man, if you just help me with the, and I was very specific. It wasn't just like, I think it, it goes over his head when I say help me with homeschooling. Yeah, I and need I, your help with homeschooling. Yeah, what when the heck I does discovered that, mean? that this day, because when I said, man, this kid and this kid, just sit for an hour, it was like Len, who is not emotional, like he's not super emotional. He lit up. He's like, oh my goodness, yeah, I can help with that. And he was like, I, that's what I need. You, I need you to tell me how to help you. And it was almost like he was helping me realize he wants to help, but it's like a moving car. Especially the way I can be, I can look like I got it. So he doesn't know how to, like, how do I come in? Especially, 
after work. You're coming in, and I know Sarah's like this. She got dinner, the kids, everything, so he just doesn't know. So it's a gift. You, we're partners. He wants to engage with the family and with his kids. It's a gift for me to tell him, can you do boom, 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 and be specific? Then he could be like, okay, cool. Like It's kind of like our kids are like that. We want, we're part of a family. So to say I don't like help is kind of cheating him of engagement and participation. Well, I think there's another layer behind that, too. Okay. That I think what you or Sarah Callie may have interpreted as apathy was actually respect. So like Len, me, I don't know your husband, Callie, but probably similar. We married strong, intelligent women that I've looked at Sarah before. I said, if I get hit by a bus tomorrow, you'd be sad, but you'd be fine. Like yeah. she can take care of business. Yeah. It's one of the reasons I love her and married her. Mm -hmm. And so how do I know? I, I really think she could do anything. Yeah. Because she's yeah. so capable. And so I'm not going to jump in and start taking stuff because she doesn't need my help. Yeah. So she has to, number one, choose to need my help. But I'm not, it's, sometimes I'm not getting involved because I respect her so much. I'm going, wow, she's got this. She is good. Yeah. Until yeah. she tells me she's not good or she's stressed, yeah. you know? And the more independent you are, I think, as a woman and smarter or whatever, the more of a gift it is. Because I know Len loves, I don't know, for me to humble myself and be like, I need you. It's that message of, like you said, it, it gives them the opportunity to rescue, mm -hmm. you know, and that's cool. Ira wants you to define something. Ira says, define what you mean by traditional marriage, Janelle. The 1950s, 60s were different times. I'm not attracted to women who need men to do everything for them, which yeah, is a pain either. for me. Me neither, yeah. I grew up with three strong women in, in with male head households that has to do some things by themselves. I like to be with women with some independence and want help when needed or not. In the article when yes. I was talking about traditional marriage, wow. it was like as opposed to just hooking up or shacking up so it's just like you're a unit so you can still be independent but that's what it meant in that sense of traditional marriage what are your first thoughts because you react I, no i really like what he said ira when you said i'd like to be with a woman with some independence and want help when needed or not mm -hmm. that's the thing especially for strong women like you probably don't need his help you're choosing when you get married to decide you need it Right? Yeah. And so you may not, like, you could do the math. Yeah. You could do it. Yeah. You're not, when you ask for help, you're not saying, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just a dumb girl. Exactly. You're choosing, whether you need the help or not, you're choosing that this is going to be better for the family or he can do this. I don't need to do it. Exactly. So I'm going to need him to do it. You see? Yeah. So that's a powerful statement, Ira. I like that. Lydia says, even though we're independent women, it blesses us when our husbands step in and serve us. Yeah. I love that. That's true. Because one of the things, like you said, with the kids, I could, I'm very resourceful. So I could easily think, okay, if I can't do it because of time or whatever, who can I bring tutor, resources, programs? But to ask him is an opportunity for our marriage to grow closer, for him to grow closer with his kids. It, like, it's not about me or my need of help. It's about an opportunity to create more and more unity and engagement as a couple. Yeah. So, yeah, I love that. Even if you're independent. What are your thoughts on traditional marriage? What? How would you define that? Traditional. Because well, it's true. If you're talking to somebody in the 50s and 60s, that looks different. Oh, it looks totally different. I mean, traditional marriage in, in any sense would have to be, my definition, have to be biblical. A, a description of what a Christian marriage looks like where... Um, Husbands have sacrificial love for their wives, and women have respect for their husbands. Yeah. If, if it gets that simple, that's a traditional marriage. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't, in terms of submission and independent and all that, because somebody in the 50s could tell you, yeah, these women are very, indep very independent, like it's bad, let's say. Yeah, you can I, be in a traditional marriage and be independent and handle business, right? Look it's at the Proverbs 31 woman. Exactly. She yeah. wasn't sitting around just cooking all day yeah. and wearing, looking pretty. She was working. Yeah. She was capable. She was running a business. She was, you know, absolutely. Lead, Lydia says, and um, another thing is give us a break from the things we do well every day. 
I have a funny story yeah. to share, and it's so sad. But I told Lynn, you know what gift you could really give me that would make me super happy? In the morning, because he gets up to run before I leave, I was like, can you open the gate? And <laughs> Can you open the gate for me? And then he was like, of course. He's like, yeah, cool. Then I was like, I told him this week, you don't understand how much that means for me. I'm like, it's so heavy. He's like, no, it's not heavy. You're pretty strong. <laughs> but it's like a break of like... Like you said, I can handle stuff, but it's reminding me like I'm not alone. I even thought about it after he went to sleep and I was like, wow, if he was missing tomorrow, that would be a little thing that would make, that would remind me he's not here. Like I'm not alone. I got a partner. So little things like that, just even though I can handle it, it's like, yo, I, I'm a partner. Like I have a partner. It's choosing to surrender to your spouse. It's choosing to be needed and to need. Yeah. You are capable of opening the gate. Yeah, I am. You're but. capable. And he wants to bless you and love you sacrificially. Yeah. And he would have never known you wanted that. Yeah, he wouldn't have. Yeah. And you don't need it. You could do it. Yeah. But it's it's a it's an act of love for you to, to every ask him to do it for day. you. And every day it's an opportunity I give him to show me he loves me. You know, and like you said, we gotta explicitly tell him, like, man, if you did this, it would mean so much. And he wouldn't know <laughs> yeah. if you didn't tell him. Lydia says, even though independent, I need to allow myself to need my husband because it blesses him to be needed. That's yeah. the truth. Lydia's dropping truth today. It, it, it is that balance. Uh, be, because, again, like, if I see my wife doing something every day joyfully like she does, effectively, I don't know why I would step in and do it for her. Yeah. It appears to me as if not only is she good at it, but she likes it. And we have a way of, like, let's say I didn't ask Len for help with math. And he just came in. I could take it like, so you don't think I can do this? <laughs> you know? So I can see why men try to be careful and, and respect. Because it is out of love and respect. Yeah. If you're like, wow, you're so good at that. Obviously, you're good. Yeah, you got this. <laughs> and I don't want to insult you, but I think I need to do this for yeah. you. Yeah. Eva says, it's not that we don't need you. Sometimes we are of the mindset that if you want it done right, you do it yourself. We've talked about this before. I don't like wondering if he took care of business, but when extra tasks are placed on me with the phrase, you do it best, then I'm thinking, well, how about I teach you how to do it now? Now he surprises me and lets me know everything he's done. It may not always be perfect, but the effort means a lot. Cheryl? Yeah, no, that's a thing, though, isn't it? About you want it done right? Now, for, for you and Len, it's... It's the not opposite. typical. It's the opposite. Len is worried about it being done right. Yeah, he grew up like he was trained better than I was trained. And so he folds better than I, I fold. He irons better than I iron. But, so early in marriage, it was a lot of, no, that's how you fold. This is how you fold. This is how you fold. And so now it's flipped. So he folds the clothes. But we have a big family, so he's had to relax. So now Isaiah folds. And he's just like, I don't care, just fold the clothes. Well, but, but it, I think it goes to the point that if you look at it even in like an office setting and in, in, in work relationships, a bad manager is a micromanager. Mm-hmm. They not only give you a task to do, but they micromanage the way you do it. Yes. No one likes this. It's terrible. So if in a marriage relationship, a task is handed to the spouse, you need to immediately let go of how it's done. But what about, we care about quality. There are, he, I'm going to be honest, he folds better than I fold. Quality's relative. Is it really though? Yes. Like Sarah and I have talked about this, like her standard of cleanliness is quite literally different than mine. Not necessarily better. Right. I lived a happy life with a different standard of cleanliness (laughs) than she did. And my family had a different standard. It wasn't even just me. My family. Yes. Even though I know and I feel like he folds better than me. I remember early in our marriage telling him, do you realize, because it it was a point of contention. And I was like, seven billion people around the earth don't live like you do. And they're surviving and they're happy and they're like, okay. So it's like you said, it's relative. You can do it and be fine. I just want to be gentle with the people that are, there is quality matters. And so some people could feel like if I do that, then I'm, um, settling for less or you well, but know? I think honestly it's spouses whether it's men or husbands or wives get over it right now honestly yeah. get over it right now because the minute you look at your spouse and you tell them they didn't do it right after asking them to do something they're never gonna want to do it again. yeah it's true so you not not only need to get over how it's done but you need to get over your standard for the result yeah now I mean 
there's obviously extreme exceptions to that. Clean the floor. Oh, I went like that. You know, th there's a total, there's a big difference here. Yeah. But generally speaking, don't you think you have to get over not just I how, agree. but the quality? I agree. Because if you ask someone for help and you criticize how they do it, you're a micromanager and you're rude and you're annoying. And, and no you're one's going to ungrateful. Gonna like the person helped you. Yeah. So it'd be like, oh, you didn't do it the way I wanted to. That's ungrateful, big time. And I hate to say it, that's where the proverb com comes from. Better to live in the corner of your roof or in your attic than with a contentious woman. Yeah. That's where that comes from. But it could be women or men. Right. To be I honest. agree. Especially in your family, it's going to be. <laughs> you, you'd rather wow, live you in the corner. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Go to the roof and wow. live with a contentious land. Lydia says, people are surprised that I travel and totally trust my husband to take care of my children. Surprised. My husband does it so well. I trust him and will not be controlling. We women need to be less controlling and trust our husbands. Yeah. Honestly. Oh, my he's, he's going to feed him this and that if I let him watch it. So? My mother was really good about this. And one thing she would tell me is, when we would say as a little kid... Oh, he, let's say, oh, he didn't, you know, he didn't cook. He fed us cereal. She's like, that's your dad. You stayed with your dad. So you're going to get who your dad is. When I'm here, you get who I am and, and, and how I do it. So it is a way of having your children experience uh, their personality and not like you through them. Lydia says, oh, wait. You should go to Linda. Up. She, she has a counterpoint right there. Linda says, and yet... There are men out there who resent their wives when they ask for help. They view them as too needy. They don't want to help. What does a woman do then? It's not me. My husband loves to help me, but I've seen it. I've yeah. seen it too, Linda. So what's your answer to that? When men resent their wives because they seem too needy. Then I think it's a conversation of... Like, it's an issue that needs to be addressed. And maybe from a third party. It's, yeah, it's possible. But I, how do you identify neediness versus, I need your help? For example, uh, dude, I'm working all day. You want me to wash dishes or help you with the kids? or I don't know how it, it manifests itself in different ways. But a man can say, I've done what, I did, what I'm going to do all day. Now I need to rest. You want me to come home and work too? But, but part of that's just in, you got to learn through marriage. You can't do that. I... So how do you address it as a woman? That stuff up. How do you address that as a woman? Directly. Oh, okay. You got to, uh, and I mean, I would literally say, if I was that woman, I would say, I ask you for help, and it seems like you resent me for it. Can we work through this? Because I don't want you to resent me, but I need your help. See how clear that is? Yeah. For whatever reason, this is one of those strange things. It's like rocket science to be clear. We talked about this. We had a woman call in years ago. I'm never going to forget this. She called in to say all she ever wants is that when she wakes up, her husband has coffee, a cup of coffee poured for her. She's been married for decades. And I said, oh, <laughs> did you tell him that? She goes, no. Yes. And she's not dumb. Yeah. She's a smart, wonderful Christian who loves the Lord. But this is one of those odd things in marriage that you forget that sometimes, no, all the time, clarity is needed. You can't assume anything. Yeah. If you want something, ask for it. And if they don't do it, ask them why. Yeah. Don't harbor a quiet resentment. It's going to destroy your marriage. That's true. Eva is uh, highlighting that w working women can say the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Lydia says, I threaten my husband. If he doesn't help me, I will become too independent and then not need him at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. That, that happens. But you know she's got the smiley face because it's a tongue-in-cheek threat. Yeah. I get what she means. But but even if you don't threaten it, that's what you create in a marriage, you know, where you just, you, you have it. You know, and so that's why we're encouraging when we say, the more you ask, the, even if you can do it, the more it strengthens the bond. It's mm -hmm. the need, and it's the, like, I got you. Even if you have to create it intentionally. Callie says, ready for bed while I'm nursing the baby. She I'm says, I have a husband. Help get our boys ready for bed. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and that's one of those. I, I have a that friend who really used good. to get so upset when somebody would ask if he's babysitting his kids. He'd go, excuse me, they're my children. Hello. So yes. that's good. He should get his kids ready for bed. And someone said they're something busy. that is so sweet. She said, quite frankly, Eva, quite frankly, kids prefer when dad is in charge. Most are less structured and more fun. Oh, my gosh, yes. We I all be here do it that. right. It's true. Sarah, if you're watching, <laughs> baby, 
Don't listen, baby. <laughs> it is so true. Dads are, are fun. Yeah, it's good that they experience both. Callie, sometimes I'll just hang out with our daughter after she falls asleep to get a break from putting the boys to bed since I'm home all day with them. Yeah, so that. you kind of prolong that? Oh, yeah. No, there's plenty of times when I'm sure Janelle's in the bathroom a lot longer than she needs to be. Oh, just yes. so somebody else has to take care of it. Yes. Or I'll be like, man, somebody's losing it. I'm not going to get out of the remember, shower yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember when I was nursing. Oh, that was such a good excuse to just sit there and do nothing. I'm like, oh, I'm nursing me. <laughs> Remember I that? I knew it. Yeah, I would do that. Oh, yes, it was great. I knew it. Hey, dude, I'm feeding. Oh, we need to nurse this baby. It's better for the baby <laughs> to nurse. I can't clean, can't cook. <laughs> oh, that's our Thank you, system. guys. Hope you have a great, great weekend. Great discussion. Always good talking with you. I always grow with the things you said. So glad that you are hanging out with us. Don't forget, Monday morning, we're back. 6 to 9 a.m. and then back here in overtime at 9.05. Hasta luego. Oh, yeah, I got to turn it off. You yeah. are always like, oh, my God. I forget what my job is. <laughs> I could help with that. I think that's talking and I'm toast. It didn't work. V-E-P.